I'm Seth with the Bearded Butchers. It's December. December, we're thinking about Christmas. And with Christmas, we're thinking about beef prime rib. I'm here to show you different types of prime rib, where it comes from on the animal. This one's gonna be pretty cool. So I have a grain fed beef front. I have a grain fed beef hind. And I can tell you, prime rib does not come from the hind quarter. It comes from the front quarter. So right here, I've made a cut. This cut is between the fifth and sixth rib. So from here up, I have six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And so what you have right here is you have seven bones. This ribs. The, the rib section that's located right here consists of seven bones. So um, we're just gonna get to fabricating that out. But in the meantime, I wanna show you something. Come on in here. So these are the prime ribs that we already have prepped and ready to go for our upcoming Christmas orders. These have, are, are aging here in our cooler and you can see I mentioned the seven bones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the rib end. This is that loin end. So you have the big end of the prime rib and then this is the smaller end. I'll go into detail a little bit more out on the floor, but I just wanted to show you some of the ribs that we already have ready to go. We're gonna be working at filling orders this week. Uh, and these are gonna be Christmas centerpieces. Some families are gonna really enjoy these. Get my 10 inch Victorinox breaking knife tuned up. So as mentioned, I have a mark here between the fifth and sixth rib. And we're just gonna make that cut all the way through. And when I mentioned the rib end and the loin end on that prime rib, this is the, the rib end right here. Let's take my handsaw break that off. So this portion from here to here is going to be that rib section. Um, I do want to clarify prime rib, standing rib, rib roast, they're all the same thing. So prime rib doesn't necessarily mean the grade of the rib roast. It's just a nickname that it, that it has gotten over the years. So prime rib, rib roast, um, standing rib, it's all the same thing. That's what I'm going after right here. So Seth I brought Spring, in- It's one of the few misnomers where the word prime is used because it's the beef primal. So it's referred to as prime rib. Does not, it's, it's literally the only case it does not necessarily mean that it graded prime. However, something like this did grade prime. So, yeah, so if you just, want a prime, prime rib, that's a specific ask yep. you would have to ask your butcher. That's right, go into your butcher, ask for a prime rib roast that has been graded prime. That's how you'll get that, so. Get this rib plate section down on our saw. This is gonna get hung back up and get it out of the way for a second. Good. You guys have probably seen me do this quite a few times on camera, but to get started, we just move this, remove this outside skirt out of there. That'll get trimmed up later. Now I'm gonna cut the plate off of here. I'm gonna cut the ribs off and then we'll get to this rib section. So I could have left some of the length on these ribs um, instead of cutting them back like I did right here, but today, for today's video, we're just not going to do that.
Now we have this in a spot. So you take your saw and you remove the back of that vertebrae. So now I can get these bones all nice and cleaned up. And then we're going to go through and I'm going to show you the different types of rib roast. So I did grab two of those rib sections off the shelf that you saw earlier. Um, one of these we're just going to leave just like you see it right here. So seven bones, as mentioned, bone in. This is a bone in prime rib. So I don't need to do anything with that one. That one's just going to stay just like it is. Now the second one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one into a rib eye. So this is going to be a boneless prime rib. And to do that, let's take my knife, score along the top of these rib bones, stay nice and tight to the meat or to the uh, bone. So if you buy a, a rib roast in a package, you know, at your local grocery store, or your butcher, and you want to remove the bones, you can do this portion at home. So just get those bones off of there. Pretty simple process. Remove the bone. That's that beef back rib. And now what you're left with is a rib eye roast. And because I removed the bone, that makes it a rib eye roast. So there you have a bone in and you have a boneless ribeye. So just remember um, with these back ribs, if you do buy one that has the bones on it and you, re you remove them, save this. You can barbecue this, maybe put some beer butcher black seasoning on there. Um, makes a great set of beef ribs. So just keep in mind that uh, you do get an added bonus when you remove that. Now for the third style. This is my favorite style. Just remove the feather bones here on the back. Get those removed. Now what we want to do is we want to remove this fat cap right here, not to be confused with the spinalis. This is not the ribeye cap. This is just the fat cap on here. Sometimes when you get a prime rib, depending on, you know, maybe a custom processor will have butchered your beef. They leave all this on there. So you get a lot of added material that you kind of want to remove it before you cook your roast because it's just not, not as good to leave it on there. So remove that fat cap. Get the patty whack out of there, that yellow cord. So after we get that yellow cord removed, now we have seven bone rib roast. That's that rib end, that's that loin end. Basically the same roast that you see right here. You just watched me take it out of the animal, came from the front quarter of the beef, now, I want to, now what I want to do is something a little uh, special with this one. We're excited to announce that what I have right in front of me are large shakers of Bearded Butcher Blend seasoning. And these are now available in all Academy sports stores. There's 285 locations. If you head to the store locator on our website, you can see where those locations are. So why don't you swing by Academy Sports and grab a large shaker of Beard Butcher Blend seasonings. Okay, so bone in, boneless. Both These were both seven bone. Now what I wanna do, um, and we should probably talk about weights a little bit. Let me just take this, just so you, you, know, you know what you're getting into when you see a roast that's this size. 19.15 pounds. So, um, you know, just to give you an idea, that's a pretty big uh, prime rib. So if you figure, you know, pound per person, but it would take a lot for, you know, a lot of people to eat a pound of meat. So whether you have ladies, you have children mixed into your group, 
Um, a, a rib roast this size could very well, you know, easily feed 20 to 25 people, depending on sides and things like that. But um, another way that you can order, so this is one way you can order prime rib. Another way that you can order it is you can order it by the bone. So you can say, I want a four bone, but I want the rib end. Um, in my opinion, this rib end, that one that was closest to this, this uh, chuck eye portion right here is the better end. Um, it has more marbling, it has more of that spinalis on there. So if I was to order, let's say, you know, a 10 pound-ish prime rib, I would uh, personally, I would want a four bone, um, and this is to feed a family of six, you know, my, my wife and my, my kids, a four bone prime rib, and then I would ask for it to be off of the rib end or the large end. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut this right there at four bones. So that gives me a four bone and a three bone. Now this roast, certainly um, it would be phenomenal. This is that loin end. Just in my opinion, um, you know, it's just not quite as good. You can see that spinalis on there. Um, that obviously everybody knows that that ribeye cap, that's the most amazing part of a rib, uh, rib steak. You can see that it's, it's very minimal here on this end, but um, yeah, so if it was me, I would order rib end about a four bone. So also I wanna bring up the fact that um, rib steaks and ribeye steaks, those both come from this portion as well. When you leave the bone in it, you have a rib steak, you take the bone off, like this one right here, you have a rib eye steak. So just to go over the steaks a little bit. Now, this is a, something we do here um, and it works fantastic. So kind of have the best of both worlds when you do it this way. Um, what you do is you take this bone and you remove it, but then you do this cool little thing once you have it removed. So there you have boneless, bone in. And what we like to do is we like to get some of our butcher string and we like to tie that bone back on. So just do a couple strings on here. And when you tie it back on, the beauty of that is that you can cook it like this. That bone protects that meat, adding some of that flavor. And then once it's been cooked, you just simply remove the bone and then you can cut it into however thick you'd like each serving to be. So this is the most popular way that we sell these. This is another little trick for you go into your, your butcher and ask them to remove the bone and tie it back on for you. And what you get is kind of the best of both worlds. You get a beautiful prime rib with the bone removed and tied back on. So that's another way that you can do it. So for the last version, I'm bringing in these big guns. We have six of our Beard Butcher blend seasoning flavors in what is now a large shaker available on our website. Um, these are great. So they actually have a larger sprinkle hole um, for the barbecuers and the folks that are uh, really using a lot of seasonings. The flow is really nice on them um, and there's some added value. So you get a larger shaker at a little bit cheaper price. But um, a couple of these are gonna come into uh, play for this next portion. So for this next version, this is how I would do it. This is how I would prep this rib roast um, for the holidays. I'm gonna use black and brock of those larger shakers. I'm gonna show you something pretty cool. So, and if I play my cards right, I might actually be able to just keep this prime rib for myself and cook it up for Christmas. I'll have to talk to the the accountant, see what he says, which is Scott. But uh, so I'm just gonna remove this back rib. Pretty simple process. 
Get that bone off of there. Now we're going to do something that's pretty cool. I'm going to start with the brock and I'm actually going to put a layer of seasoning underneath of this rib before I tie it back on. So we're going to do nice liberal coating of brock blend on that rib and then on the actual rib roast. Look at those granulars. You have all those different spices in there. There's a little bit of fennel. Got that nice chunks of salt. Doesn't that just look awesome? So if you watch our Instagram stories and our Facebook stories, you're gonna know that this Brock and Black mixed together is one of my favorites. If I'm doing burgers, if I'm doing steak, the two of these mixed together, you just, you can't beat it. You get all the, all the flavor profiles with the Brock and then you get with the Black, you get the coffee and the molasses creates that nice bark, just incredible. So there's the Brock. Actually, I didn't get this side. So there's the Brock. Now what we wanna do is go in with the black. And you can do a pretty liberal coating with a chunk of meat this size, you can't. You can't over season it. But I talked about those spill holes. See how nice that, that shakes on there? Just comes out of the shaker really, really handy. That smell is hitting. Oh, doesn't that smell good? So good. Man, just imagine that on Christmas morning going on your grill. So Scott always says there's Scott's hot tip. This is Seth's hot tip. If you get some on your board, you can always do a little a patty cake, patty Wait cake. That here is Seth's hot tip. Yep. You're I'm not, not sure you're not out here to uh, defend <laughs> your. I'm not sure I authorized that. You're, you're, you're not, not you're not, you're, you're not out here to defend your, defend your title. I agree. Uh, I like it. Hey, since you're out here, uh -huh. um, I just said something about you being our accountant. And uh, you just, I, you just I think $37 I, of beef and I, 17 cents of, oh, 13, 50, 25, 30, 70, 80, 80, well, over a dollar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it even higher for you because guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna snag this one for myself. Okay. <laughs> you wanna, you wanna arm wrestle for it? Literally Seth's tip? It is. Let's, let's, I think uh, that's just fine. You wanna, oh, sweet. Not that I need permission, yeah. but I just, we're right. partners in business, so it's always good to, to run one past, you know, each I'll, other. I'll have a bologna sandwich on Christmas. <laughs> I'll, I'll cut you anything you want out of the rest of these. All right, so once you get it to this, this spot right here where it's all seasoned underneath that rib and everything, um, what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and get my strings. And I'm just going to tie that bone back on. And the beauty of this is you have that seasoning now that's trapped underneath of that rib bone. So you really get the best of all worlds when you do it like this. So if you ever want to learn something, uh, just you know, ask the person that's in the trade. So it's like when you go to a restaurant and you ask the waiter or the waitress, you know, what, what they prefer to have off the menu. You know, what's your best plate? What's your best drink? What's your best? Um, that's kind of like what this is. So if you came in here and you asked me, what's your recommendation on a prime rib? This is, this is what it would be right here. It would be this four bone off the rib end, cut the rib bones off, pre-season it with Brock and Black, and tie the bones back on cooked over a wood fire. It's going to be incredible. I think this one's going to go on my Yoder smoker Christmas day. So there you have all those strings holding the, that rib bone back on. So there you really do have just the best of all worlds right there. So we actually did do a prime rib cook. Um, Spencer, if you could throw in the link, 
we did that. Um, so we're not actually going to take this one to the grill today. Uh, we're in a little bit of a time crunch here before the holidays. Our website has been absolutely um, just insane. You guys are incredible. We've literally packed tens of thousands of orders over the last couple months. So you guys are fantastic. We can't thank you enough. But uh, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to achieve in this video was I wanted to show you the different types of rib roast. I wanted to show you my favorite way to prep a rib roast for the holidays. And um, so what we have, again, just going over as, as our overview, we have that bone in seven bone. We have that three bone off that loin end, bone taken off and tied back on. Then we have that ribeye, so the bone's been completely removed. And then we have the absolute beauty right here to finish things off. So a four bone, rib end, preseason, tied back on, ready for my table on Christmas day. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. It's not gonna be a very long one like our typical videos. However, um, we're pushing 2.5 million subscribers right here on YouTube. Can't thank each one of you enough. It's absolutely incredible. Our social media channels have just absolutely blown up. So has our website and our sales. We currently have our warehouse and our headquarters building that uh, maybe Spencer can throw in a little bit of B-roll. Uh, that building is being built right across the street from our butcher shop. Things are coming along. We're looking to move into that building uh, May of 2024. We're excited about that. So appreciate each and every one of you. Hope you have a blessed and a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the Beard Butchers. Until next time, see ya. Scott, favorite Christmas movie? It's probably got to be a Christmas story. Christmas story? But there's, can I give you like top three? Sure, sure. Home Alone, or Christmas Story, Home Alone, and Elf. Okay, yeah. got it. Sean, our favorite, favorite Christmas movie? Mm, probably Home Alone 1 or 2. Okay. Stacy, favorite Christmas movie? Definitely Home Alone 1 and Elf. Good choices. Favorite Christmas movie? Elf. Elf. Josh, favorite Christmas movie? Uh, Christmas Story. Christmas Gotta story. watch it. You'll shoot your eye out. So that's favorite Christmas movie? Christmas Story. Christmas Story? Yeah, Bar none? Bar none. <laughs> favorite Christmas oh movie? Oh my god! Favorite Christmas movie? Um, the Santa Claus movie. The Santa Claus movie. Yeah. Favorite Christmas movie, Grace? It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life. Alright, and then Grace said she wants to film me. <laughs> Home Alone 1 and 2. Easily. That's not one Easily. Of movie. Okay, well, Home Alone 1. Okay. And then 2 is an honorable mention. <laughs> Favorite Christmas movie? Home Alone 1 and 2. That's... Elf is mid. Yeah, agreed. Favorite Christmas movie? Uh, Home Alone Good 1. Home one? Alone 1. Okay. Favorite Christmas movie, Allie? Santa Claus. Santa Claus. That's the same as Liz. Luke, give me your favorite Christmas movie. Um, Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Okay. Give me your favorite Christmas movie. Home Alone. Home Alone. 